that's what we'll probably be looking at like next year. Right, but I just did it based on 2014 actual expenditures. Just to see what it could look like. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get started here. Uh, first one up is Resolution 57. I believe the last time we talked, we were going to hold that to our next meeting. Am I correct in my assumption? Official meeting? Correct. Okay. I thought the engineer was going to yeah. report to us. Yeah. You're up. I'm up. 57. Okay. And what exactly? <laughs> this, this was your question as to the language from the forum resolution. Right. For yeah, so I took a look at it, and really the forum resolution they want is pretty broad. Um, our resolution is more specific. That being said, um, you know, if you still have the concerns that you expressed at the last meeting, um, you could revise the title, uh, the second line of the title, to read Ohio Public Works Commission for potential grants for the funding of capital infrastructure improvement projects and declaring an emergency. And then we could. Excuse me, the emergency Um. Yeah, that's fine. I'll say it twice. And if you go down to section one. Whereas, I assume, would be the same grant. Whereas would be the same. Okay. If you go down to section one, uh, the third line, assistance in the form of a grant for each of the following capital infrastructure improvement projects. And if you skip down to section two, the second line, you delete financial assistance, add, and add grant funding think that would be responsive to the concerns you expressed. And that wouldn't take us out of the consideration. I don't, I don't see how I comparing it to standard language they give us at the end for that question. And so you'll have to to us before the official meeting. Sure. That would have kind of read it as Unless you want to move forward with it tonight and you can make the amendment from the floor. It's a, it's a yeah, that's what I think because it's the time. It makes sense. It was July 31st, right? It's supposed to be in, right? Yes, that's so, correct. Well, we could, why don't we could pass it tonight if we... If we change the language? Yeah. Okay. Well, just motion right. as amended okay. to accept it. Do you, do you want to make those amendments? Amended. Yeah. Okay. There's a third read on that one. Before you do the third read. And then the next four are related to most of our conversation for the evening, so... <laughs> If anyone wants to start that conversation, feel free. Well, I guess I'll start off by saying I think we all can agree that we have a roads issue and we're all here to try to fix it. So without that, you know, let's, let's try to make something where it all works with, the, with everybody and try to come up with a plan that works for the city. That said, I kind of came up with something that fell a little short according to Rhonda and the mayor because it didn't address the total rehaul of the very poor and poor roads, but it was a seven-year plan that would raise seven million dollars, and that would that would take care of the first 20 roads. But speaking with the mayor this morning, he says it comes up a little short because it didn't wouldn't fund enough for totally fixing all the, all those roads. So I, I, I never really presented it, and I don't have anything to withdraw. But I guess that's my theory is. If we can find something that fix the worst roads now, um, gain some trust back in with the citizens by saying, hey, we're going out fixing the worst roads, then maybe we have a chance to renew this plan. But it certainly is a starting point for a plan. So and I think the one thing that plan did call for is preventative, preventative measures. And I talked to Ms. Natavange, and he said that any money in the budget right now to help crack seal, um, help fix the um, catch basins, cold patch and hot patch, 
would be more in the budget than he had this year. So I think that I allotted $250,000 a year. I asked him if he had enough manpower to do that. He said that they would be able to do enough, a lot with that money, but I'm not sure that he needs that much because he does not sure if he has enough men to do it with. So, but that would be that would be something to prolong the good roads and the very good roads. So it takes a lot longer for them to become fair and fair to poor. Um, the roads that are, from what I heard, fair and fair to poor, are already past that stage of needing crack sealed and hole patch they're you know they're eventually going to need refixed so joe i mean I, I being a novice at it some of the roads that are at the top of that list do they need a total rehaul yes they do. so the number that there was on that list that we that we have for the city yeah how close do those numbers represent what you think the actual roads going to need to be fixed i think that these are accurate numbers i think these are the numbers we should be working with. okay absolutely because the mayor thought that those were the numbers just to surface it, to patch it, and uh, like do one layer or something. The roads created very poor, poor, and fair to poor. These dollar amounts represent reconstructing oh. or recycling the roads. Fair and lower on the list, these costs represent. Uh, and then I, I guess my well, plan would make more sense then. He was saying too that they needed to be the, the ditches wide in the ditches, be, right? Because yeah, they should be 14 foot lanes. So he's talking about curbs and the whole whole allotment, which I don't think that includes. Uh, no, these costs do not include right. realigning ditches or that's what you curbs curb. Curb. So I guess that the twice is do just which has been done in the past. Because you're going out to fix them, but you're not fixing them to the way that they need to be fixed. For example, when we did those roads over at Airline, Barkfield, and et cetera, we, we took them down because they hadn't been touching, I want to say almost 30 years. We knew 20 years. There's still three streets that were never touched. That was 600 grand. Well, they can't just be patched. They can't just be crack sealed. They need to go the same route the other streets did. So we've got to be careful when we're saying, well, let's just do the top 10 or top 20. How are you going to do them? Are you going to do them so they last for 20 years, or are you going to do it so they last for a year or well, two? Well, he, I mean, just said those, those yeah. are the numbers that, that are going to make those roads last. There must be additional costs with some curbs and some ditch work. But I think the top 20 roads, I think it was around six, five point one million dollars right. um, just to fix those top 20 roads. Because yeah, three of them are half, they're, they're almost 600. The next two are 600. That's a million, million two, just six roads. So. Well, I think it's important to consider, too, that those roads, I'm assuming, are pulled up reconstruction. They're not like a mill and fill where they're just going to skim some off and put another layer down. That is Wait, correct. The roads that you're talking about is a pulled up so, reconstruction or recycling. In my thinking, where I was going with this, <laughs> Mr. Pilkey, the, the roads that are in the fair condition if we can band-aid with the preventative maintenance, and my thought was with the original one that had it passed, we'd have some preventative maintenance that we could start to proceed with. Now, I know that preventative maintenance is generally within your first one to five years. We have not done a good job of that because we haven't had the funding to do so. So if we can start to figure out one of these that can work and start the preventative maintenance, we can prolong some of those roads that are down the list to do these things. Because we, we've been, the crack ceiling, we haven't put enough money in, we know that. But I think that's something we need to take a long, hard look at investing more in. Yeah, and to your point, I guess the one thing that I would add is, like you say, the preventative maintenance is really stuff we should be doing in years one to five when the road is new. So even the roads that are in fair condition, you know, I'm not sure if we want to invest preventative maintenance dollars there. You know, I think we want to be investing the roads that are good, I think is where you want to invest right. your preventative maintenance dollars and hold those roads in the good category for as long as possible down the road. This way they don't inch up the list on save us a big dollars later. So you're, wait, you're basically saying that a preventative plan is crucial for, for any long plan term, now. yeah financial responsibility, I guess. Well, what you're trying to do is put a together plan that doesn't just address 
the roads it needed today. Right. But how do I fund what I need to do to keep the fare from crumbling to zero? How do I get the rest of them to stay that they're good for five, ten years? This isn't just a one-year project. I think we all agree the fact this isn't ongoing every year. So that I think the thought was that in 20 years you're back around to the first one. So it never goes away, right. ever. So it's not a plan that says, "Oh, I'll get enough money to fix these roads, and then I don't have to worry about the rest because I'm going to be right back in the same spot." And you know, the roads that are that were number one on the list haven't been touched in 30 plus years. But you drive down Crow, and you're like, well, that's not really way up in the top. But now the way it's got issues, it's going to be back in the top. And that's one of the most, you know, it's one of the heavily traveled roads. So I think whatever we do, we have to look at, not just fixing, but we've got to have money in the budget to keep it going every year. Not just say, okay, we did these, and five years later we come back and say, okay, now we want to do five more, but we got to come back and get more money. I don't want to throw the scare tactic out, but at what point does it become a liability when you know they're deteriorating to the point where they're, you know, alligator cracking and, and they're throwing it apart? I mean, what point is that a liability on the city? Well, you have your traditional. I mean, you're asking for personal injury type claims. Your traditional analysis, whether something's open, open and obvious, and generally, obviously, the city hasn't made a charity the majority of those claims. So, but you have to factor in the cost of litigating at all. So, I'm having just been print out the plan. So, do you know if Joe had any indication of how much more that the plan came up short? Um, we're putting the curves and the ditches in. Instead of the 5.1 million, he thought it was going to take, um, I think it was 6.7 okay. to get um, another 30 percent okay. to get them um, in a better. So we'll, we'll put that number on the end and then we'll see what, a, what it would take out for a 5, 6, 7 year. And you could do that in your head probably, right? No. <laughs> so the need is how much? Well, I had it. It's, I had it at five point one, so we could be six point seven at one point five for maintenance, preventive maintenance, and then have a little bit for repairs, equipment repairs, and equipment that we can purchase for our employees. Um, and then there's some incidentals that you can't, you know, those are estimates, so you don't know if they're if they're going to be high or low by the numbers we have to work with. So she's going to print it out and I'll hand it out to everybody. Well, then the other thing, this addresses the roads, but part of the levy was not just roads. It was stormwater. No. And I know it was brought up that we'll get money from NUSRD, but it's 250. One project was 400. So do we wait and accumulate money and do a project every three years? We bonded. I mean, that's we basically bonded. what you're going to win. We bonded. That's all. That's amazing. amazing. You never so, want to borrow a bond. The last conversations when we had. No, no. So we never want to borrow a bond unless we have a guaranteed income to pay the bond. That's all Can I ask you a question? So we those numbers, are they, they um, address stormwater mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as it would affect those roads in particular? So you're saying these numbers? Yeah, no, yeah. These, this is pavement. It's just pavement only. Water. Okay. So it would be more for... But we don't crossovers. I, I, I've heard that word three times. Today. Yeah, we need crossovers. crossovers. We need other things. Okay. So, but, but is that thirty percent that we might cover it? Does that make sense? That well, extra got, money? Got your, I, I'm not saying. I don't know. You got your. Yeah, we're going to sue. I said uh, I, nobody wants to hear any input other than uh, you know we. Need well, let me present time. this, and then we can get your okay. input. Okay. So. We got fifteen minutes. Go. Okay. Well, well I'll. I'll I can't hurry her up any faster. We're having a discussion. No, no, I'm not. So I'm sorry if you felt that I cut you off. It wasn't my intention. Well, well this is an open yeah. dialogue right. amongst all of us. I mean, I mean sometimes you take, well, take the lead and no one well, else can talk. So. Well, that is absolutely untrue based on the previous well, experience. But I think there, we're right. looking at is we're looking at do we have a plan to fix roads the way they need to be fixed. Dave is saying we could go for bonds. That's for the storm. I we're on here for the stormwater portion. That council said we'd never do that again. We'd never <laughs> take out another note. Which council said that? Said we would take was, out another note for repairing roads. That was. I'm sorry. That was sitting here at the table with you, Peggy Spragans, and Ken Martin. 
Well, that's fine, but we, we haven't had a good roads plan, and that's simply because we haven't had a long-term plan. I don't object to the idea of a long-term plan. I think it's the so only reason Rhonda, we need to do it. How about if we, we round it off to around okay. 7.5 to 8 million? Well, with the extra 30%, I came up with 8.5 million. Well, there you Thank go. Thank you, Ben. But wait, and let then us then include more. four. Does that would include very okay. poor and poor roads, totally fixed, refixed, stormwater addressed in all those areas, maybe not any extra areas, um, but a total rebuild on those roads so that they're, they're, they're fixed. And then a preventive- curbs? In, well, yeah, the 30% that, that, that's gonna be that's added on. He's about. shaking, no. No, it's sounding like this 30% that you're talking, and again, and I haven't okay. seen this information from Josephine yet, it's sounding like you're including the curbs in this. That's what, yeah, that's what the measure. Well, no, my question is, is it to you, is that right? Well, You're, I don't know. I haven't seen this information. Well, well what's 30% of that number? To the, to the, to it's the six eight, 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 oh, 80 for Valley View Road. Okay. How much do you think that you're going to need to put curbs with? Okay. Or to fix the, the ditches because there's no curbs on Valley View. Yeah, I was just going to say Valley View, I don't think it has any curb section. Um, you know, I guess the way, sorry, Josephine. <laughs> um, let me give you some space there. I guess the way to look at it is uh, in the Never memo that we used earlier this I year. Sorry, that's okay. Um, the memo that we had from earlier this year, from April of this year, uh, the cost here is $440,000 per mile to relocate the dishes on a road that would need such a treatment. Okay. So, I mean, I guess one way to look at it is you can go in here, Valley View Road, like you say, is number two on the list. 7,300 feet, that's uh, almost a mile and a half. Right, so, so add another 400, 600,000. Yeah. Okay, so I guess in this plan here, you would take that 5.179 and add to 30% would be 6.7 million. To what, please? The six-year estimated cost to fix 20 roads, rated very poor or poor. Add 30%. Add 30% for curbs and ditches. And that is? 6,734,988. Which is seven on the bed. And then uh, the, to, to address the preventive road maintenance plan, I had 1.5 million set aside for the same amount for the six years, roughly $250,000 a year. And then if you add everything else in, it comes out to 8.5 million. So the increase to that 7 million will be 8.5 million. And that includes what? That includes fixing the top 20 roads that need it. And what about stormwater? Well, it, same thing. It addresses all those curbs, ditches, and the crossovers. Just for those 20 roads? Just for those 20 wait, roads. Wait, wait, wait. The, our engineer has, has seen this for, for less than 30 seconds, so I think we need to give him time. True enough tell us, so I guess you got some number crunching that you would be sure. down tomorrow. I've actually seen it for zero seconds. Right, I, didn't, I should have sent it to him earlier. Oh, Thank you. Oh, well, it makes, <laughs> makes the number crunching even harder. <laughs> so if we can get a number, I guess my theory, it's more of a theory than a actual number. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. I mean, it matters. <laughs> yeah, it matters. But, but no, I didn't, but it matters what the numbers are. <coughs> we stretch it out over a, a set amount of period. So if it can be six million, eight point five million, we can find a, uh, an increase to, to pay for. It. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Is that if we could we collect it for seven years, we collect it for five years. Okay. So, so, so it should be a set amount of years to pave, and then after that set number of years, we can revisit it and see if the program worked. So the plan, tentative as it is, I'm not being critical, is eight point five, give or take. Right. We'll get but, a yeah. blessing. And you're saying for how many years? Are we seven years? I've heard five, six, and seven. We don't know. Whatever she would have the number. So we need her blessing on that. <laughs> All right. I figured in, to get seven million, I thought it was going to take seven years. Okay. To get eight and a half million, it's going to obviously take more than seven years. It's going to take at least eight. Okay. So let's say at seven years, at uh, 8.5 was how much a year were you planning? Were you saying we need? I'm looking at a. A million forty per year. All right, so it just called a million, right? Okay. So. And that's at point two five. 
collecting yes. extra. Okay. Yeah, he's, they were talking about increasing income tax by 40% and over X period. Right, or coming up with a, a million dollar income somewhere else or yes. in Correct. our budget. I'm just trying to understand the scope. Yeah, so the 8.5 year projection is the roads, the maintenance, and the stormwater. And I'm talking not the road, the stormwater goes with the curves. I'm talking Bedford Road, Guadalupe. No, it doesn't include that. See, we, we're still missing a whole giant piece of the puzzle here. Right. It doesn't include Ledge Road. It doesn't include the roundabout at Valley View and Highland. It doesn't include Shepherd Road Sanitary. And it doesn't include Sioux Culver. It doesn't include Sioux. It doesn't include Bedford. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include. Right. It includes those Guadalupe. down the road. It includes them on there. Those are the roads. No. Paving the road doesn't do you any good if it floods. We still have an issue with stormwater in people's homes and the way it flows, which then degrades the road at some point in time, too. But Can I ask you to your question? you want to fix the road? Can I ask questions? No, absolutely. In regard to discussion. the ledge road water issue, have, I know that you know, you're getting a lot thrown at you. But mm -hmm. Have we come up with a, an idea or a plan of what really needs to be done to deal with that yet? For Legends, Bedford, Drain and Study, Kathy Loya address. Yeah, let's just call it the Loya project. We don't know exactly what she means. The Loya situation. Um, the whole area. Yes. We'll call it the Loya area project. The Loya area. Um, and there's a couple of things. The, the approach at this point is that we need to slow the water down upstream right. well before it gets to Kathy Loya. So by the time it gets to her intersection, it's far it's too late. It's too late. And, we'll go so, and there are some some possibilities north, upstream of her property, uh, some areas which we can perform some stormwater detention, slow this down, and help out not just Kathy Loya, but quite honestly, help out everybody along the Indian Creek corridor. Right. Just really what we should be doing, not just investing all of our money in one person, but everybody as a whole. So that's the thought. Um, mm -hmm. The sewer district, which we know we're now a part of the stormwater management program, right. we pay the fee. Right. They have uh, come in here to the city hall and they've met with myself and the mayor, uh, and they have told us, now this is verbal, but they sat at the table and they told us that Indian Creek is very high, if not the highest priority corridor on their list mm -hmm. to implement uh, some improvements and to spend some money on. So we've got that out there. That, uh, that is above the community share. That's one of their projects. That is correct. And the reason being that they've told us this is that Indian Creek falls within the regional yes. system. Sure not the community, the local community cost share system. So I think, you know, as a city, we need to tap into that regional system funding oh, absolutely. <laughs> to pay for, for these repairs for the Loya situation as opposed to the city just trying to pay it out of our own pocket or trying to, you know, squeeze it into these budget right. numbers somewhere. Right. I, I think that that's absolutely what we have. So I think you're telling us that, that for the purposes of budgeting, right now and looking at future income, you're saying that we should be taking that project out of the equation? Yeah, I would say so. At this point, I think you take it out of the All right, equation. So the, but the question originally, and I appreciate the answer to the equation question, was what, what, are we, what do we think, I mean, do we have any firm numbers? Do we have any, do we have something other than a concept? And yeah. I'm not being critical. I'm no, that's, trying to that's find out understood. Where we're at. Uh, the answer is no. We don't have any firm numbers or solid design. Uh, we need to get the sewer district involved, and we also need to access the properties that are in question. And right. so, so the sewer district would also be involved in both accessing properties and design. Yes, they will. So we're taking everything related to that project out of our talk. At least that's what you're suggesting. That's what I'm suggesting. I, I have to laugh because their number one was Big Creek and their other number one was on the east side. So how we went from zero to number one amazes Well, me. I was just going to say, when yeah, we were me. going through the litigation, they made, I yeah, heard that the same group. promise reiterated to several communities. So, I mean, but I haven't been part of the current negotiation. It's also, sure. I know the resident was told by them that they were going to study it again. 
Oh, yeah. Well, so there everybody could be another six said, months. To get back to these, so. to these roads. Do we, well, no. What, the, what the would, question what is, are would we funding the, any for stormwater? Well, what's, we what, how much do we need for stormwater? That would be the right. next question. Yes. Yeah. And, and I guess to the answer, the answer to Jan's question, the Sioux, the Lady Guadalupe, what, what, how much money is needed for those projects? Well, these projects, I think we tap into the, the local community cost share account with sewer right. district. Okay. And um, for Sue, the original bid from last year was $387,000, I believe. We're looking to cut that in half. Okay. About that, just did it on that paper. 200K, yeah. something a little less. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, for Guadalupe, I think the original estimate, engineer's estimate, was 375 uh -huh. or something uh, right. along those lines, close right. to four. Yep. Uh, you know, and I, that plan remains unchanged, so I think the cost estimate so, also remains unchanged. So that. almost $600,000. Right. That would make it nine, nine million that we needed. May I say something? Because we only have five more minutes, and I haven't out of, been allowed to say anything up to this oh, point. Well, we're talking about this plan. It's an open conversation. Well, okay. well I'm going to try to speak okay. to this. Do you understand? <laughs> I don't, because this is the plan that we're talking about. So right now we need $9 million to, to, to fix the stormwater, the very poor, and the poor roads. Is that a number that we all can agree with? I don't think you need nine. I think you need the lower number because we have 225 from the uh, annual estimate. From, yes, and, and an no, annual. Yeah. Okay. We've got to be very cautious on counting them because they have to approve the plans when they give you the money. That's what they told us. Yes. So, but but yeah, to so Dave's money point, that may come, but to we Dave's don't know point, money. we're not going to do the project without those money. So the money is going to come from there right. and, before we do the project. And it would seem that we th that we can fund over a very short period of time for the road for the. Uh, the, the Sioux Culvert and Lady of Guadalupe, so I don't think we need to put that in the, in the tax question. That's my point. Right. So I guess the whole point of my discussion was, how much money do we need to do these 20 roads that are very poor and poor? Well, 20 roads plus two, you, you got to keep Guadalupe and then you got to keep Well, okay, plus Sioux. the two projects, fine. Yeah. So that if we can come up with that number, that could be the starting point we get back to. Can't forget those people. I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? That's Are we going on the floor? We need to, we need to come up with a starting yeah. number. Go ahead, Sylvia. We can discuss it on the floor. That's fine. So we still didn't get the final number that we all can agree with. We'll, we'll no. speak for a second and then we'll, we'll Somewhere between eight and nine. Okay. Thank I you. do not agree with any number that's been stated here. We don't know. We don't have a good estimate. And let's start there. Second, we are. We do get stormwater money. So you're not even agreeing with these roads that I'm not, Mike Ladd and Nick Feeney walked and gave an estimate on? Uh, I am not agreeing that we have a solid estimate on these roads that you listed in your plan. Okay. Okay, uh, number one. Number two, we are going to have around $850,000 available if, if, in fact, we renew the quarter percent and do I guess, uh, can I ask you a question? No, thank you. Okay. I can ask you a question quick. We'll let her finish this. Well, I know, but we got to start right there. Like, how, how, I, can, I can't how, wait a minute. I just, you got to answer my question. No, how I you, would like to say you, something. <laughs> but you got to answer my question. No, where, I don't. Like, not right where, do you, where do you, where do you, where do you want to get the estimate to fix the road at? Like, who do you think should give the estimate? We need an overall plan that looks at all the financing, and all of the issues regarding these roads. One of them is stormwater, I agree. We already have a clear picture that NERSD has been given the authority to charge us a fee. They're charging us a fee right now. And every resident and business is now aware of it. Which we used to pay. Don't don't make this out like it's brand new. No, That's I'm not saying it's brand That's new. That's how we get the two fifty. Huh? I can't see. It's just my question is where do you want to get the where do you want to get the estimates Let from? Let me talk on the floor. May I say something? Sure. I, I, just a minute. Yeah, I, I understand what Sylvia is saying. Uh, that, that this isn't a firm and concrete number. It's yes. not. We've got an engineer who's sitting over here, and we're weapon numbers at him. Right. And he is saying, "Hold on." Not that dramatic, but I haven't even looked at this, so it's not a good number, and you know that. Dave, Dave the, the, the plan, the, they did it last year. No, 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 no. 
but then you're adding on 30%. Okay, well, that, that's... Just let me finish. You're adding on 30% for, for curbs. We're going to get rid of ditches. And this man hasn't had a chance to look at it, so you can't say we have a good number. We do not have a good she number. She doesn't even agree with the numbers from when Mike Ladd and Nick Feeney walked the street. There, there it doesn't was. matter what she agrees with. I'm saying you can't agree with the number of 8.5 because this gentleman hasn't had a chance I'm to listen. I'm not holding it to that either. Well, well, okay, well but we're can. talking about passing ordinances that tax people over X amount of time, and we don't even have the fundamentals down of what we really need and what we're agreeing on. And part of the problem is we simply haven't had a true roads meeting where we've gone through everything and we've looked at what the situation is. And that's number one. Number two, we don't have a good revenue plan because there's a uh, clear picture here that NERSD, which wanted to charge us before but was not was suspended from charging us as a community, has now had the authority now placed in their hands to charge us and they started charging us. So that's a new situation. We didn't plan for that at the beginning of this budget year because it hadn't been in place. How many, am how I many correct? Roads are RNRC correct. Gonna play for? I am correct, Sorry. am I not? So that's number one. Number two, we have to look at what we are doing with regard to the total amount of revenue that we could receive if we simply held it at 2%, which is what I've said before, but I have a specific thing in mind here. We are we are in a situation where we have spent over a long period of time money on construction and capital needs in these two areas, City Hall and Recreation Center. We are now at the point where we have neglected our roads over that entire period, I would say longer than that. And we need to look at what is the highest priority use of our funding that we could have available if we had a 2%. And therefore, we really need to look at what is absolutely essential to do, which I believe is the roads, and what is optional uh, to some extent and can be planned over a period of 10 to 20 years. And so I say this, this process has not led to solid, firm, plan numbers which should be in an ordinance that we're asking people to pay money to the city of Macedonia for. So that's my point, and we can all go on. So your proposal, this is what this is for, is to talk about this. Not go out there and talk to the audience, but talk as a group. Uh -huh. Your proposal, if I'm reading this, is we leave it at 2%, uh -huh. and we're going to fund road improvements we're going to do the maintenance and operation of the city rec center, including any new construction, which I can tell you right now won't happen based on the dollars needed to perform any of that. So, well, I don't think your, that your that's discussion true. then is also to allocate. Mark, have you looked at this? Does the changing of 50% to current expenses, eight and a half to general improvements? So, yeah, so I, so I drafted this. He drafted it. Per, that, is that changes to what we have today? So what this does, it's a 10-year quarter percent tax increase. 80% of it. It's not a tax it, increase. Well, it is an increase because it's going to drop to one. And you're saying instead of going down to one and it's not quarters, a, It's not, not an two. increase over the current rate. Right. It is an increase. It's just going to keep it at two. It's keep about it, how will we agree with that? It's but, a quarter percent for 10 years. Yes. But you're not renewing. Right. There is, you've got to be careful because you're not going to try and tell people it's 25% increase. Right. We're taking 25% of your pay. You're well, saying like it would go down to one and three quarters, but this would say instead yes. renew that one and three quarters, but that one quarter no. will now be used in this what fashion or no, what the it's whole, saying. excuse me, the whole 2% is used in this fashion. Okay, what it's, it is saying if I know. percent for 10 years, 80%. Goes to roads, twenty percent of the forty percent goes to park and rec. Right, and it will basically renew or replace the existing levy that was originally uh, put together almost two decades ago to construct the recreation center and outfit it properly. And it, it would be effective when the other the old well, when it expires, correct? Is July and, 1st. Which is July first, and at that point, uh, well, I think we need to look at. Uh, we have sources of debt that are going away. We have additional income coming in from any RSD to the tune of 225000 
So the commitment on this previous increase was to use it for roads and stormwater. I think we should not even do that. I think we should allow any RSD to fund what we're doing. So I'm saying the recreation center would then be the other high priority item. So I've included it in Did this you quarter this percent. That Ron had I, the one that's circled. Right. It provided these numbers. To right. I understand so what so those so numbers so mean. What is so what this is is on the second page. I did a scenario. Oh, okay. uh, no, I haven't seen it because I, 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 I gave it to you. You have a copy. Well, I, I understand yeah. what I'm saying is okay, I haven't reviewed this. Says. On the second page are the actual expenditures and revenue right. source in 2015 Correct. and 2014. I understand. What I did is I did a scenario. If you took the income tax revenue out right. and you took the debt out, this right. is what the operation results would look like. I understand. And then I did another column with if you added the debt, well, the income tax in there, assuming you still got a quarter percent. Yes. Well, I added that and then had no debt payment and what the outlook would look like. Just based on 2015 and 14's activity, assuming it looks similar going forward, this is what it would look like with income tax money, but no debt payment. Let me ask you this. Yes, you would get income tax money of 200,000 a year, give or take, well, uh, if you, uh, in, this scenario, in this scenario that I'm describing. Right. If you look at it without any income tax, as of right, right now, you're short almost $400,000 a year. Is that 364 so, is what you're saying? You have oh, 386,000, right, 389,000. All right, and, and this, this analysis. Yeah, that's mine. All right, so this analysis is the which, well, how much income tax? That's what I'm going to yes. understand. Well, this income, this is just assuming you keep the quarter percent. That's, I'm just showing you. This is you Sylvia's just, plan? No, no, this, the myth, no. no. This is quick, I'm just showing is. three different scenarios. All right, scenarios. that's what I'm trying right. to understand. So the yes. 364, right. based on if I had no income tax, that quarter percent's gone. I have no debt payment. No debt payment. Right. Which everybody keeps right. talking about. We're going to have this found money. The rec center is short. Three hundred and eighty-six. Okay. Okay. You're still saying I'm going to be short, or I will be ahead three sixty-five. The You're member be I will short, be short three eighty-six. Three eighty-six for the year, Correct. and it's just going to start eating away at the fund balance. Is just it will operating yeah. operations. It will. It will. You know, we are going to have by the. What would you estimate we would have in the right fund by the middle of next year? Where did you put well, that in there? No, if you, I what did a, would you, could I you did estimate a split. That? What I did on the first page is I did the quarter percent right. for 10 years I get at it. various scenarios, 70, 30, 60, 40. Okay. Um, the 2080 split would only give it $208,000 a year of income tax, which would not yes, that's count correct. for a shortfall. Right. What I'm saying is this. Have you, what was the amount of money that would be in the rec center fund if it continues until mid-year next year? You can take, um, okay. well, just give me a little question. I don't know, about a million and a half right now at the end of 2016, potentially. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, about 2.1 million. Add $500,000. Okay, $2 million. $2 million. There's $2 million there in that fund and you have what you're showing here is that we are going to add money in so if you took my scenario you'd be short a little bit but there's management that can be done there are membership fees that can be adjusted so it's not like you have to increase the, man the membership fees then well you i'm not saying you do i'm saying there are management activities you could perform the assumption was not that they were going to have a million dollars in perpetuity when they originally passed this. So the, they came up with a plan to build the building and equip it. And what you've got right now is at the current membership level, you're right, those are the numbers, I'm familiar with the numbers, and they are expanding above those numbers uh, annually. What I'm saying is those numbers do not make such a wide gap if you have 200 and some thousand a year, plus you've got that $2 million in the rec fund. So in, let's take this real easy. When the debt's paid off, do I have a savings account? Let's call it a savings account for the rec yeah. fund. So if no money, more money goes and, in, right. it's going to start dwindling. <laughs> sure. what would 400, be, almost 400000 a year. What's in there when the debt goes away? Consider it. It's you have a, salaries and operations, and then you have membership income and just 
two hundred fifty thousand right. dollars. But is there any income? extra money? No. Other than the income, so there's no like savings account of a million bucks. I mean, you have a here, fund balance that I can dwindle down. Just the fund balance of a, a one point five million. Well, let's let's say you're going to have two million, which is what you just said. And after the, next year's five hundred thousand. Yes, correct. But that's not uh, taking into consideration what next year's expenditures are either. Well, okay. Let's say that it's two million in that fund, and they're they're spending right now. Wait, she just said there's not even. There will be something close to that, right, Angela? Not after she just said you're not considering the expenditures for the year. Okay. Because they have to do the the, uh, the pool has to be done. So there's other the pool, capital. The pool what? Can has to be painted. Trained and done. The okay. The usual animal. stuff has to be done. Maintenance has to be done. Not arguing that. What I'm CBS saying system. is this, that this cool. amount of money has come in every year. They've gotten something close to 500 and X thousand out of memberships, and there are some program fees that are coming in, and that adds up to. Well, wait, didn't you just say that? 758, something like that. But we subsidize, yeah. we subsidize today, if, if I read this right, if we took out the debt and the income tax, they're 386,000 in the hole because they're, and that would be based on revenue from. Memberships, revenue from programs, revenue from renting out the center. So right, wait a minute. I don't, I don't see that. that there would be three hundred to the. You're looking at one year where you're going to have a half a year worth of income. Okay, I understand that. Let's After that, let's just assume it goes away. Right. You're going to be four hundred thousand dollars in the red every single year, which will be you easy won't away. necessarily. Well, we were last because year. here. Here's the thing you have to understand that, from my perspective. Every year you have a baseline budget, you have X amount to spend. Right now, they have been spending somewhere around 900 annually uh, to run the operation. It's 1.1 million. Well, 1 million. I looked at the numbers uh, last year and I didn't see 1.1 million. This is straight from the expenditure report. All right. Okay, and what, what has happened is we've had, over a long period of time, we've had the income tax running between 1 and 1.1 million, and you've had 758, so it's been somewhere around 1.8, 1.9. For the in, for the rec center? For the rec center. No. In 2014, it got a million 51,000, that's net of retainer. And in 2015, it got a million 39,000. Oh, I understand, I'm saying the total amount of money coming in between memberships, oh, between. follow me, memberships and uh, income tax program tax. fees and that kind of thing and income tax, somewhere around between 8, 8.1, 8.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 
I understand and that. we have to stay current in this industry right and not allowing us to have the funding stream coming in or at least allowing the voters to decide that is a disservice to this community because that rec center is going to shut its doors we okay. cannot maintain status quo and stay stagnant for another however many years it takes to dwindle the the money that we have saved up I am let me let's just take that one at a time one I'm not saying you should say stagnant I'm saying that the, there are some possibilities. Increase membership, that's one. Increase. I just told you that cannot happen without well, improving the existing Well, that's, that may be. But that's an option. Increase membership. You can also increase programs that pay, for, pay additional fees into the rec center. Those are options that exist. Those are options, and they, are, they bring in very minimal revenue. Well, according to this, they bring... Programs bring in very minimal revenue. People complain about paying additional for fitness classes. Right. They want them included. I'm and just saying you do... included them at this yeah. point, we'd be another more than 40 grand down. Okay. So if I wanted to take those away and include that, I would in a heartbeat. But that now also impacts the revenue stream. Everything... So this all ties in yeah. together. I and, understand. And there are not simple fixes with no dollars. Well, I'm not suggesting there are simple fixes with no dollars. I'm suggesting that if we're looking at the critical needs of the city of Macedonia, we cannot afford to have our roads go into dust. So that is a higher priority than the rec center and its needs. And you can make adjustments in managing the rec center to reflect that. That's what I'm suggesting. Now, you may not think so, but then we need to think about what it is we're spending money on. One of our residents sent an email to all of us saying that it's very unlikely that we can support, this, this community is going to support above 2%. I just went around every area looking at all the statistics regarding neighboring cities and towns. We are 2% is right in the center of where everybody is. We will be damaging our attractiveness to do residents and to uh, businesses, especially now that we've got this stormwater fee that is on that a lot of other people are not paying. It's like a tax. So we need to be thinking about what's absolutely essential, the must-have versus I would like to have it, but we're going to make adjustments. So when you talk to people about the income tax, you tell them, that are, we're very competitive because our property taxes are a lot lower? Well, we're not a lot lower than, you know, remember, cities primarily depend on income tax. That is the way that but we play the game. people pay taxes. They do. So they don't care where the taxes go. They pay taxes. So, <laughs> okay. so we have to take the whole picture of what someone pays in taxes. Well, I understand. And what I'm saying. And not tell them it's a 25% increase in their taxes. It, it is a 25 percent increase in their income tax. That's what it says. It, it's let, me, let me interrupt a second. I talked to a resident who also works in the city, who also owns a business in this community. They want the rec center to expand. They also know they're going to pay any OSRD, which kind of means like a scare tax. It's been there. They paid it before. It's bad. We've already fought the battle. We spent money. <clears throat> they have no problem with the tax increase. That person's going to get hit three different ways. And they have no concern because okay. it's the future. So when you say, you get people who say, no, I can't afford it. I'm going to pay for it. My husband's going to pay for it. I had another resident tell me, you know, you did, you did these homes for the roads. Too bad about the rest. And I'm like, okay, so what do we do, assess people? I mean, let's look at the picture of what do we do to get roads. We're now going back, we're going to get a bond and pay. Do we assess people? Do we take away the tax credit, go to two and a half? I mean, seriously. No, we're not suggesting that. I respect your position because that's your position. But mine is, if we stop growing as a city, what are we going to, who, who are we going to attract here? Would you want it? And, okay. You know, that, that's my perspective. I understand. Is that we need to keep on increasing our amenities so people want to move to Macedonia. Well, people love Macedonia, but 
What I'm saying is, but there's the other attractive. options. So as much as you say that two percent in other cities are Remember, attractive, those other cities also have other amenities that are attractive. Well, so it's not everybody. Hudson doesn't have a rec center. But they have the highest taxes in Summit County. Well, they do because they that's have the a library. Go. They have a library that they support through property taxes. Yeah, that's their judgment that they want to do that. So, but I'm that's just saying that there's, they're almost double what we pay. There's different, there's different advantages of living in Macedonia than there are in Hudson. Oh, but that does not, does not, um, it's our jobs to provide to people. Well, it you is know, not our, our job is to, is to look at what is essential and make sure we're supporting that. I guess that. the definition of essential well, is Well, essential is, uh, I, I need to buy food, I need to have my car payment, I need to buy gasoline, I need to, and not essential is, I need to take a vacation to the lake. How about I want my my value, the property of my value to increase? Well, the value of my property to the increase. value of your property is going to be looked at in terms of people moving here. What are your roads like? What is your tax picture? You're two and a half percent or two and a quarter. So let me paint you a, a scenario. Yeah. Okay. So say that that we we are lucky enough to get you to support some sort of increase, and I hope that we can because it's what is needed to fix these roads. And no, we, can, we can tell people, listen, you might pay an extra $500 a year <laughs> for, say, seven years. So that's going to cost you $3,500. <laughs> but hopefully in that seven years, the value of your house, because we put a roads program together, will increase $5,000. Doesn't okay. that make a little bit of sense to do it that way? No, it doesn't because what you, if you want to say, oh, by the way, we're going to fix your roads and we're going to keep it at 2%, but... We want to have a recreation center that's top of the line. So we're going to ask you to pay an extra quarter percent to support that. Well, I guess I, then right. that's fine with me. Well, let's go see if they'll do that. Well, but yeah. but listen, to continue. We would like you to su support it or at least not campaign against it and let the voters speak. Well, and not go out there and vote The voters it. did can speak I already. You went out there and campaigned hard against it. Can I ask well, a you a question? And it was a different, it was a, different, it was a, okay. a half. I, can I ask a question? It was question? a half percent, too. So it's a little different. And Sylvia's proposal. But if we went out there and, and as a team said, this what? is what the city needs well, to move forward to increase our value, Let's, then it would work. What I'm saying to you is this. Within the 2% that we're going to pay are all of the essential things, in my opinion. If we want to if we want to propose to the voters to go out and pay an extra quarter percent, in the future to support the recreation we center. We just showed you it didn't, it fell short of supporting well, the rec center. It falls short if you manage it as it's currently done. That's true. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, this is I'm a not business engage process. in this. So you've already said that you're, you're the best engineer, you're the parks director, no, because I said you're the only like person that. that has access to it. You already told him how to do his job and her how to do her job. I did not. But you basically said that you don't respect the numbers that Mike Ladd and Nick Feeney did. You well, don't affect your management style Ladder because Nick it needs to be managed better. <laughs> that is isn't. All right. Oh, it's okay. Well, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you, know, you, can't, you can't wear all these hats. At some point, you're going to have to trust the people who are doing this for a living and say these numbers are theoretically what we have to work with. It, it puts us all in a bad them. position because this is what you do. And I'm not harping because I respect you. But you can't start at a different point than everybody else Why not? because you have a different numbers. Because it's not fair to everybody else well, around council. I am not saying anything about different numbers. I am perfectly willing to use Rhonda's numbers. I've used Rhonda's numbers. But you're not Mike this. Ladd and Nick Feeney's. Well, Mike Ladd and Nick Feeney did not do a detailed plan. All they did was yeah, they drove the roads and they made an estimate based on that. Which, and that's what their job was to do. Right here. Is but, that not an ODOT standard, what they did? To, to get to those assessments, and did you not also verify those? Because I could have swore the mayor so that you did go verify those. Yeah, I've been through this report, and we've all seen it. Yeah, we've all seen it. Sure. Right. right. Yeah, and I have no problems with the ratings. I don't either. That my predecessors have done uh, nor the dollar amounts. So he is essentially telling you that he's verifying the dollar amounts needed to repair what we need to do. Now let me give you a macro picture, and I'm, okay. I'm going to leave this. This is my last statement okay. about all of this. All right. Macro view, way up high in the sky. We've got a pretty big problem in our in our general fund here too. Now, a wise person once told me who used to sit in that very chair said that you should have a 20% carryover year, every year mm -hmm. to uh, appropriate for emergencies. Dave, Dan, and I we fell into one of those emergencies, and my fear is that emergency is coming back again. Mm -hmm. Our carryover this year is going to be 
five hundred. It's estimated if we spend what we budgeted, it's five hundred sixty thousand. Five hundred sixty thousand, which we will eat through like nothing, and then we'll go back to bare bones. We'll cut everything down, which we've never recovered from. I'm just trying to give us a little stability so that outside of the roads and the stormwater, there are other responsibilities we have, and no one's even talked about that. But all this accomplishes is it alleviates the strain on that general fund to maybe build up to that 20%, like as a standard in, in all municipalities, so that when we, we reach this next emergency, which could happen any day, we have something to do it. You're not even taking into account, and I know I, I, I'm being redundant when I say this, police cars, fire equipment, uh, any other emergency that pops up. We're not looking at any of that. We're, we're just trying to fix the worst roads, which that this, this thing's gonna snowball. We're gonna have worse and worse roads. And the thing that concerns me the most, I'm looking at Kevin's proposal here, Crow Drive's not even on there. My God, have you driven it lately? In, 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 six, hold on, in six years from now, seven years, if we got to it in the seventh year, can you imagine what that road's gonna be like? It's gonna be atrocious. It's not even gonna be drivable. Okay. So what I'm getting at is, your plan, and I think the majority of council's telling you, is not going to work. Now, you, you can take that with a grain of salt, or you can work with us to find somewhere in the Let's middle. work with it, yeah. That's what we, that was the whole thing. Well, we're not like. working for the middle because you've told you guys you you're, you're going to pass it, and that'll be the we end need of it. To, we need to have a plan that addresses improvements to okay. the rec center. Okay. So I just kind of made a little list. That I, I understand some, the list. Here are some of the things that... Um, May I say improved. something then in response to what he's saying? The well, and I think here, first he says you see it's two I want to small. say thank you for putting the proposal together. It's something for us to talk about, something for us to look at. What becomes very evident is if we go this route, there's not enough money for the rec center to stay in business. I don't think that's that's bottom line. It would be gone in a matter of a couple of years because if you raise the fees, if you raise the programming, if you if you start to lose members, as you lose members, I mean, and this also says for maintenance and operation, including any new construction. Well, if I'm if I read this right, Rhonda, you're saying we'd get a two hundred eight thousand a year. Yeah, possibly. But we're three hundred eighty six. It would give us 208000 for, for the rec center and 832000 for roads. Okay. Correct. But for the rec center, right. I, I would still be shortened right. by yes. 178000 And that's just right. operating. So this, this basically says take that quarter percent and split it between things. And rec center, you got to go figure out a way to do it. I'm not a real fan of that because I'm a real proponent for the rec center. Right. I use it. I have used it. Right. My concern is, we got to do our roads, but right. do we do it at the cost of the rec center where we might as well just close it Perfect. today? Right. Perfect. Yeah. Well, either we don't have to close the doors. We have to manage differently. Now, but let me respond How to what you're. How are you going to manage a shortfall of two hundred? They've grand. got a two million dollar. They're going to have a two million it's dollar two fund million. to work from. It's not two million. We already said it wasn't two. Yes, you Rhonda already really told us we don't have two million. And no one's even mentioned one point eight million. million whatever lot that okay. needs done today. Well, no, let's talk about let's talk about golf ass for theirs too. That we could have fixed that parking lot this year, last year, whatever. But With we what? didn't. Now let's let's just I talk asked. about this issue about we didn't do a baseline budget this year. If we a baseline budget that ever, ever I've been involved in is you start with what did you spend last year in operations and you increment it based we, on we requirement that. for uh, payment of any raises, that kind of thing. I, did. Yeah, I know you did that. But we had a lot of stuff layered on top of there, including this, you know, add a police officer, we can have an SRO officer over there, add these people, add those people. Do so just replacements. So you do that. Well, they weren't just we replacements. We did replacements they essentials. only. Well, essentials. They're not essential if we don't have the money. What is essential? What Having is police, it? is that essential? We were yeah, no we one have had police well, no one did any crime, would it be essential? <laughs> well, I mean, Listen, what, you're, what we is have essential? Police. What just we were because you about didn't agree that it was essential, the majority of council what? didn't believe I agree. it was essential. I agree, but that okay. means that you didn't think the roads were essential because we you weren't putting it into that. First of all, we did have but, a bottom line budget. We compared 14, 15, and then to 16. Nick, Second of all, we talked about the increase in pay. Mm -hmm. Third of all, we also talked about we didn't hire anybody. 
We sat here as a group and decided we could not afford to hire anyone. The service department is still working at a 10 year ago number of people. They have lost people because we went to 0% raises for three years and had to have people leave. So don't say we didn't do that when we did. We're also years. not going to find money yeah. growing on trees. Well, we didn't we right, budget can, for let me, roads let because let there wasn't any money. We didn't have any money. Okay. We didn't do any This capital. is the list. I'm, any on, money. I'm on the Parks and Rec Committee. I'm on the okay. Redevelopment Committee. And Angela okay. helped me put this together. These are the essentials to continue growth of the Parks and Rec okay. in the park system. Sure. I mean, maybe not all of them are essential this year, but uh, this is what growth looks like. Okay. Sure. Can I ask one quick question? 50, the ones that's on the table, other than Sylvia's, since you probably already know this answer, if they raise to two and a quarter, how much money does that bring to yeah. the well, we would still get our. Is that on that little list? <laughs> no, it would. It, well, each quarter would give us um, roughly a million dollars for the road. Okay. A quarter for it the road and a quarter. Okay. A quarter for the road and a quarter for the rec center. Welcome. That's where if you renew, so if, they did, if you renew the rec center, you get a million. If you get a new, you get a million to a million and a half. And it depends on what Cleveland and Akron does, because they're looking to raise theirs to two and a half percent. Yeah, I'm not sure. If okay. I'd like to call to order the special council meeting, August 8, 2016. Uh, we will call the 737. This is our CC. Will you call the roll, please? Mr. Bilkey. Here. Mr. Engel. Here. Ms. Hanekin. Here. Mr. Molnar. Here. And Ms. Tully. Here. Uh, being it's a special meeting, we don't normally do this, but we're going to have public comments because there was a lot of uh, folks that wanted to speak. So. If you come to the microphone, state your name, your address, and uh, please try to keep it to five minutes or less. Our first person is Jessica Brandt. Hello, I'm Jessica Brandt. I live at 573 Blue Jay Trail. Um, I've lived in Macedonia my entire life. I'm 37. Um, I bought a house in the same neighborhood where I grew up. I've been going to the rec center since it was open. I just came from the rec center, literally. I was just in the showers. In the dark showers, the moldy showers, from the very small locker rooms, crowded locker rooms, from the pool. That uh, I like the pool. I like everything that it has. Um, I've used the weight rooms extensively. I've used the, the machines extensively. But I don't think that there's any draw of the rec center uh, for families, for kids. There's the pool. The pool is very crowded. I've taken my nieces there on weekends. It's very crowded. Um, I think that we could use a uh, gymnasium for kids. I think that there could be more programs for kids, something with gymnastics, tumbling. Um, and, and I don't think that um, the keeping the quarter percent is too much to ask. I uh, have a business here, so I pay taxes. I pay double, as it were. Um, and I am for the income tax increase for the roads, and I'm also for the quarter percent renewal for the rec center and I've seen plans of what the rec center was supposed to be and it's nothing near what it was supposed to be um, and I think tax increases are important for Macedonia because we don't have the industry or the offices that the cities around us have so comparing us to Hudson or Solon or even Twinsburg we're not getting that uh, income tax that anyone else is so if we're going to be a city that's mostly homeowners the homeowners are going to have to pay the extra income tax and pay the, the small amount of property tax to get what we need to be a city that people want to move to. I don't think roads is just going to be what people want to see when they want to move here. Um, there's you know, very little for kids and families to do and I think they do a great job already trying to make programs for the kids and families but I think they need to step it up and have it an everyday thing. Outdoor pool, gymnasium, better locker rooms that are better suited for families. Um, we take my nieces there. It's very hard to use the family facilities at the rec center. Um, anyway, I just want to re restate that I support the quarter percent renewal for the rec center, and I also support the increase of the half percent for the roads. And I think that's very important, and I hope to be here for another 50 years and paying these taxes, and I am fine with it. So please tax us. Thank you. 
<laughs> Up next is Mrs. Hannah. Uh -huh. Tina Hannah Sue Lane. I've lived here about 40 years, and um, it, if we're having problems fixing the roads, which uh, many thousands of people use the roads, and we can't afford the rec center, how many people use the rec center compared to how many people use the roads? Close the rec center for a year. Come back when we have some money. There, Twinsburg isn't that far down the road. They have a really nice rec center. And um, there's more being built all the time. Um, it, we have to put first things first. I'd much rather drive on better roads than uh, go to a rec center. And if you, put, if you have the lists, what you have to have and what you'd like to have, you know, putting money into the rec center, at least in my opinion, um, is that. I don't, nobody on my street goes to the rec center. I know all my neighbors. They don't go to the rec center. I don't go to the rec center. But I was the one that said I couldn't afford to go to the rec center, which is why I don't. Uh, so I think you have to put priorities where they are. What you can afford to do, you do. What you can't afford to do, you don't. And you know, that's the way I live. That's the way a lot of people live these days. Thanks. Karen Bartolozzi. I live at 1377 Driftwood. I'm for the roads and Iraq, rec, but I also want to know what the plan is. You're counting money that we don't have from December 31st until you pass one fourth at least, the continuing thing. What's plan B or C if we go down to 1.75 for to pay for anything? No roads, no rec. What do you do? What's the plan? If it fails, you got your counting it's passing. I hope it does. I'm voting yes. But if it fails, what do you do? That's we, are, we are in plan B now. We'll this go is plan to B? plan C. This is plan B? Plan B, yeah. Plan A was to pass that roads levy in plan, August. Okay, so now we have, is there a competing one-fourth for the roads and one-fourth for the rec going to go up or is it different the way you guys are doing this today? We have not decided that okay. yet. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Tom Ill Illig. I live at 8565 Park Ridge Lane. Uh, I, I guess as a resident, I'm always concerned about asking for money and never really understanding the rationale or the plan or the business case or things that actually support and substantiate that need for a tax increase or a levy or, or whatever it might be. It's just we give over our money and trust that it gets spent efficiently and it's maximized and we get the value. And I, I never see that. I, I'm a, I go to the rec center and that's kind of my focus is we pay a certain amount. I, I'll personally, if it wasn't so convenient, I probably <coughs> would not be a member of the rec center because I don't feel like we get that value. But other communities seem to to have certain amenities that Macedonia doesn't, and I'm sure we have some that they don't. Mm -hmm. But I, as a resident and just a kind of a common guy, I don't want to go to the rec center and see junk on the floor and hand dispensers that are empty and paper towel dispensers that are empty on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just, it's, it's not right, especially when I see people kind of sitting around and not working hard, not, not putting what I consider an honest day's work. I mean, I go there three, four times a week. My wife goes there religiously. We see it every day. And I don't know what the overall projection or what it, the need is to actually keep that thing alive. I do know that there's probably some opportunity to make things better with the money that we actually do provide and spend. 
Uh, I mean, that's up to you guys in terms of roads and rec centers. I, I don't think it's a, it's a project or a, a dilemma that you can't figure out. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the exact answer is, but just to keep asking for money and us not knowing where that value is or how, it, how we see it is, it just doesn't add up in my mind. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Art Benjamin. <laughs> hey, my name is uh, Art Benjamin, and I've lived in Macedonia for over 40 years. Live at right now 1078 Shoshone. And I didn't want to overlook anything here, but I've heard a lot of comments tonight from you folks, and I have to agree with some of them, and maybe not so much on the other ones. But I can remember when the rec center was being built, and it was like 16 years ago, and I currently spend at least 10 hours of my life every week in that rec center. I lift a lot of weights, probably more than I should at almost 75, and then my grandchildren are now joining, and we swim, and we play you know, the basketball or whatever it is, and now my one is old enough to enjoy the steam room and the sun and stuff like that. That's one of the reasons I like that rec center because I've got people that pay for me to train them in Twinsburg, and now they're coming over to Macedonia. Why? Because the weights are old, they're rusted, and this is in Twinsburg. Half the time the hot tub doesn't work. Swimming pool's great. The weightlifting room in Twinsburg is dirty. The first two feet all the way around. You just take a look at it. It's not what I say is a clean rec center. Now, you made some comments about the towels and paper laying on the floor. Well, the paper's laying on the floor because the people just don't have the sense of picking things up. <laughs> Kids are allowed to run a little bit loose sometimes. But the rec center has been forced to go back in their people that walk around and clean this and clean that and check the paper towel. So they got one person maybe doing three people's job. And they also wear multiple hats. So it's not the best situation, but they do try to keep it clean. And us adults that really respect that rec center appreciate what they do now. And if it runs out of paper towel, all you have to do is go, paper towel, and somebody will be over there within five minutes and they'll be filling it. Using the soap dispensers, they could be looked at at least once every morning. I agree with that. So I'm not totally against what everybody's saying. But getting back to my world is um, I have a real hard time believing that anybody in Macedonia that truly cares about the growth of the city, and I say a wonderful city, uh, would be ever against a quarter of a percent still being put on the ballot. And it's, it's currently in place right now. It's not going to be a big change to our, our pocket and our taxes being paid. So let it just keep on going. It'll help the rec center do what they do now, plus at the same time expand in maybe a basketball court, which numerous people that I know would love to see that. But the pool could be expanded, the bathrooms. because it's currently in place. Put the glasses on and I can read here. Uh, two main points any city needs to offer folks considering to move into their city is one, their school system. It has to be strong and maintained. They have to be rated high. And the, ch the parents of those new children or children to be uh, have to have the confidence that they're gonna be into the best school system possible. Now the second thing and it's very important for the city is to have a recreation center that is well maintained as ours is and that way they can bring their family out on, on Saturdays, Sundays, whenever they can get together and they can have some family fun and enjoyable. Uh, our rec sector currently has around 5,000 members of which 3,000 are Macedonia people and a lot of, you, know, you think about that, you say Reminderville, 
uh, Twinsburg and other places. I also work out in the Hudson Stowe one, which is $4,000 a year if you want to join it. Uh, it. And they give you your, your towel and everything when you walk in. But it's what Macedonia offers to the local people here that's really important to me. The existing one quarter percent tax currently supports the maintenance of the rec center. If the tax is continued, it will allow the rec center to offer even more options for the families of Macedonia and people outside. Our community residents are proud to have it in their city. Uh, many cities close to us uh, have their own rec center now, and they're having a hard time keeping it up, just like we are, as well as other cities are building their new ones, and that's a reminder bill. In my opinion, we should allow the people of Macedonia to vote on the quarter percent tax continuance to allow folks in charge of running the rec center to continue to do their great job supporting Macedonia and the city as we move forward. Let us work in harmony to the good of our city and do what is right. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to legislative items, resolution 57, 2016. I move that we, um, I'd like to offer resolution number 57, 2016 for its third reading by title only, please. Second. An emergency resolution authorizing the mayor to apply to the Ohio Public Works Commission for a potential grant and or loan for the funding of capital infrastructure improvement projects. Mr. Fletcher. I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, 57 2016 to remove the word and or loan from the uh, title to remove the word uh, application for our financial app assistance from the fourth whereas and substitute uh, grant uh, to the Ohio Public Works Commission. Uh, and then in section one, uh, after the word of uh, remove financial assistance and substitute the word grant. In section two, remove the words uh, financial assistance uh, and substitute the word grant for the application, uh, a grant application to the Ohio Public Works Commission. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? What's your pleasure? I move that we pass and post according to law. Ordinance 58 2016, please. Or 57 2016, please. All those in favor say aye. We need a second. Yes, we need a second. I'll second. second. What do you need a second for? Third reading? No, but she's not as easy oh, to sorry. approve. Okay, I'm sorry. That's amended. I'll so second. That was the, Mr. Bilton. We're voting on it as amended. 57 right? yes. 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 All right. As amended. As amended, all those in favor indicate by we saying need aye. need a roll call. You don't need a roll and call. And why would I need a roll call? What's that? He's saying by a voice vote. Why would he be asking for a voice vote? Okay, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Do you want to do a roll call? Do, do a roll call, I'm sorry. All right. Mr. Bilkey? Out of order. Yes. Mr. Engel? These grants are for two specific projects, one for the Shepherd Road uh, sewer connection and one for the Highland Valley, or Highland Road, I'm sorry. The Shepherd Hills one, is, which is a, a sewer which will affect 20 people and total will cost of 100, 100, 1.5 million. The uh, roundabout on Highland and Valley View is a, also a million and a half the grant would be for seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. The sewer uh, hookups for the twenty people, which uh, it's my understanding we really haven't had any problems down there, is is going to be th our share of thirty five thousand dollars per person. And I, I'm voting no because I think these uh, projects are so low on priority that we should not be applying for grants at this time. Um, Ms. Hannikin? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment also. Uh, I agree with Mr. Engel that these uh, two projects uh, are not justified given the situation with our budget. These are low priority uh, and do not 
justify expenditures in the next uh, two to three years. So I'm, I'm not sure that I would support the roundabouts ever <laughs> because I'm not really sure that we have really know whether we need them or not at this point because we've, we've had our roads messed up so much for the last five years that I don't know if anybody knows what the normal traffic flow is. But uh, in terms of the South Shepherd Road uh, sewer, uh, I just think that at this time, this is not a high priority and it's going to be very expensive for each of those 20 homeowners down there. And I think it just isn't justified. So I'm voting no. Mr. Molnar? Let me ask a question, Engineering. I thought it was 1.5 total for both. Uh, yeah, that's correct. It's so 1.5 total for so both. 150 total would be our cost here, not, so not 1.5. No, I thought last, at our last meeting, I thought you said that each project total cost was 1.5. No. no, not the total for both combined. The cost, the estimate for the Highland Valley View Roundabout is uh, 746000 and the Shepherd Road Sanitary Sewer, the estimate is 782000 So grand total, the two projects combined, one and a half million dollars. Okay. So. Does that change your thinking or no? No, I still think that uh, the, the cost is, is absorbent cool. for 20 homes on, on Shepherd. I think that the fact that we're here uh, talking about raising our taxes and then and if we apply for this, we're committing uh, Seven hundred thousand dollars that we're going to do on these two projects in the next two years. I think that's ridiculous. So my answer is still no. Mr. And mine's no also. <laughs> Mr. Molnar. Mine's still yes. <laughs> Mr. Molnar. It would be my thinking that anytime you can go after a grant when it's something that's a necessity, I would agree we should go for it. The sanitary sewer, I could see that being one that. We may not want to consider, but when you're going after a grant, doesn't necessarily mean you have to take it. I've had experiences with roundabouts, and when I first drove them, I hated them, and I thought it was the stupidest thing I've ever driven on. But after about almost three years of driving on one, I realized the value in them. And I can tell you that that area, I have more complaints about that area and the traffic involved in that area, that that roundabout would solve a lot of the issues there. So my vote would be yes. Ms. Tully, yes. Resolution 57 passes. Moving on to Resolution 58, I'd like to offer Resol Ordinance Number 58, 2016, for its second reading by title only. An emergency ordinance amending sections 18201B, 18203, and 18204A for the codified ordinances of the City of Mass General, Ohio, renewing the current one quarter percent income tax levy which expires on June 30th, 2017, and which is designated exclusively for maintenance and operation of the City Recreation Center, including any new construction and other parks and recreation purposes, said renewal to continue for the 20-year term um, expiring on June 30th, 2013. Excuse me, sorry. I'm sorry, I put these out of, I think I got these out of order. Do I have them out of order? I do, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Right. This is the correct title, and I did number, this is the correct title. Starting again, an emergency ordinance amending sections 18201B, 18203, and 18204A of the codified ordinances of the City of Macedonia, Ohio, in order to increase the city's income tax rate by one quarter percent starting on January 1, 2017, and continuing thereafter for road improvements and stormwater projects and submitting the same to the electors on November 8th. Any discussion? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with uh, asking Joe. You know, Mr. Engel asked you earlier, we had a question about you know, the numbers that we already had from Mike Ladd and Nick Feeney. Um, sorry to put you to task, but if you can come up with what those numbers would be, total fix as Ms. Tully and Dave asked about fixing the curbs, fixing the ditches if need be, and addressing the, the water <coughs> issues on those. Just so we some accurate numbers so we can come in and talk about it. And you know, truth be told, I mean, Mr. Ingle asked you, I mean, would, would it, would, is it gonna change your mind? 
Mr. I mean, does it, is what? it worth for him to do this work? To, is it going to change your mind to have numbers that are in between six million and eight million for to do this levy? I mean, is that is that going to be a factor because it's going to be a lot of work for him to do? I think the the major factor is we have to know the numbers, and I okay. think well, perfect. Let's that, that's all we know. Sure. And you know, and but at the same time, I think what's demonstrated that the, the day before we're going to vote, uh, we're still trying to figure out what the numbers are, and the engineer hasn't even had an opportunity to to review them. So you know, my concern, as I expressed at the last meeting, is we're coming back to the voters in less than a week, actually one week from the day they, they defeated a tax levy <coughs> three to one, and and going to submit something else. And I see that as kind of in your face politics and it bothers me and it sure bothers me that the fact that, that there are apparently a majority of people up here on council arguing that we need to do that when at the same time we're acknowledging we don't know what numbers we're talking about. You, you do acknowledge that it is a different plan that the voters voted on. I'll acknowledge that it's different, but uh, it's not significantly different from, from my understanding. And uh, I don't think we've educated the voters at all of what the new plan is. And more importantly, we don't have numbers. We're one of the last things that was handed out to us in the work session was a two page list of approximately 60 things that the rec center needs, but there's no, there's no cost of it. There, there, there's nothing. We're, we are shooting in the dark. And so my We can discuss that when we get to that. I understand, but you, these are all my, you're asking me is if this man spends his time tonight coming up with numbers, am I committed to vote for it? The answer is no, I'm not committed to vote for it because I don't know what those numbers are. And two, I, I don't think we have a significant, a sufficient plan to present to the voters and I think the voters, if they're paying any attention, see this glaring problem too. Do you do understand that the theory behind the plan is to come up with a number and then divide that by what would need to be to pay for it? I understand the theory, but we okay. we're, we shouldn't be working on theories here. We need to be working on hard numbers, and we don't have hard numbers. There was in our five-year plan the rec center did put together some numbers of a few of the activities in there. Um, equipment replacement, software upgrade, the parking lot. They may go there. They know the parking lot was estimated 370,000. Recarpeting, repainting, but the three things that were not included because they're levy dependent, so we didn't get the dollars of the outdoor pool, phase two of the rec center and the splash pad. This was the request for the next five year plan, but we didn't put it on there because <coughs> we don't know if that levy was gonna be put up for renewal or not. But I'm sure Angela could give us an estimate if it's just the capital improvement that was requested for next year is 98,005, 2018 was 446. That's putting, just so you know, that's putting the parking lot off until 2018. So we, we have been provided some numbers on capital requests, but if everyone on council remembers, we chose the fact that we had zero money. So we didn't really do any capital um, improvements. We did the bare, bare minimum. I wanna jog everyone's memory to April 26, 2016, when Chagrin Valley provided us this document along with our finance director. If you flip to the fifth page in there, every road is on there with a the cost. So we've known this cost since April. To say it's been thrown at you in the, in the 11th hour is false. We, we know what it's gonna cost. We know what we have to do. I'm proud of myself for remembering I had this because I knew I had the numbers in there and I, I wanted to reference them again, but we've had these numbers all along. We know the situation we're in. This is no secret to anybody and we know what it's gonna cost. We're spinning our wheels in mud constantly because we forget mm -hmm. what we have. Mm -hmm. It even references in here, I'm gonna save us a little bit of time. Sioux Lane culvert, water main replacement, pavement repair in the amount of 13.6 million, totaling up to 19.8 million. It also has catch basin repairs, the curb replacement around 
roadway call, crossover culvert replacements at 165,000, roadside drainage ditch improvements at $440,000, preventative maintenance just crack sealing $300,000, and future repair costs in excess of $26 million. So we've had the numbers. We know where we're at. I don't understand what the problem is. Nick, I just point out that the document that you're you're referring to, yes, we've had that for months, but tonight the uh, between the seven million that was then raised to eight point five was based upon the fact that the the roads that we're intending to to repair under this are to replace under this tax levy, we're also adding additional work to them, not just resurfacing or or grinding down and repairing, but we're adding uh, curbs and other things, and, and that's where I say we're shooting at the dark. We're talking. We're not talking apples to apples. We're talking apples to an unknown orange. Well, I, I agree with you, Dave. But I think this was an effort by Mr. Bilkey, and I applaud your efforts to try and form some type of compromise on council. And you know, he, he took the time to put something together to try and get us to meet in the middle, based on what he had. So it was his attempt at saying, "Hey, can we work this in this manner?" And Apparently that's not going to work. I'm not criticizing Mr. Bilkey's attempt. I appreciate Mr. Bilkey's attempt. All I am saying is I think the voters want us to have a a a, a reason thought out plan, not a, uh, a shoot from the hip plan. And again, that is not an attack on Mr. Bilkey. I appreciate everything he's done, but we are not talking the same thing, and we don't have a firm number. And so how can we go to the voters? That's it, 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 Hold on, Nick. I, I mean, we do have another night. We do have an engineer that's able to get these numbers to us by tomorrow. And the, the theory still applies, is that you take the number that you need to fix the worst roads, you, you, and, you, and you divide it up over a period of time. And I understand what you're saying, Dave. We, we don't have that fixed number, but we will have it. And it's, it's not going to be that much off of the numbers that we have in front of you right now. I mean, it's it, instead of 883,000, it might be 900,000, but it's not going to be that far off of what we have. Now, now, what we need to go is, is this plan something that we all can get behind or not? And that's what, I mean, we spent a half hour in the work session talking about it, and, you know, we're, we're still no closer to even modifying this plan. This is just a, a model that I hope that we can open dialogue about. So, I mean, it's, here's, here we are, you know, almost an hour into our meeting and there's no dialogue saying, how would you like to switch it or change it or amend it or move it to where you're more comfortable dealing with it? I mean, what, what, is, what is everybody else's plan? I brought one because I looked at the numbers and said there's 20 roads that need paved immediately. You know, there's $20 million worth of overall work, but these first roads are very poor and poor. And if we don't deal with these roads, the alternative is, I mean, it's assessing the roads, the people that live on there. I mean, we don't have money to pay for it. We said it from the beginning, you know, it doesn't matter if we were effective in our budget or not. The bottom line is now we don't, in, in some people's opinion, you know, but we don't have money to pay for these roads. So where do we get the money? Here are the roads in front of us. Let's hear other thoughts. I think the fact of the matter is, and I'm scratching my head as we're all talking, because no matter what we do, we have $20 million in work. And I'm looking at a $7, $7 million estimate, $8.5 million estimate, when there's $20 million in work. And to the gentleman's point earlier, you know, you talk about tax dollars and seeing your value. I mean, a lot of that we see, like with our state routes, where we got funding from the federal government. And we're very proud of that, but now our side streets are in complete disrepair. But I, I hate to be redundant, and I have to say it again. We have not raised our, our property tax since 1963. We, we've done well with what we have. We're at a point now where we need help. I don't think anyone denies that we need help. $20 million worth of help. That's where we're at. And the plan that's presented by multiple parties is only accounting for a portion of that and then basically saying some one plan says, well, the, the rec center shut the doors. I don't think that's the best option right now. Okay, is that, I'd like to make some comments now that, that we're still talking about uh, 58, 2016, is that correct? I, they all kind of coincide. So yeah, right. Really uh, let me just speak to 58, 2016. 
Okay, the, I do have a copy of the draft capital plan, so I'm referring to it directly. And there are five years of annual road program that add up to basically $15 million. And then there are a number of other items under this showing issues like uh, uh, the ledge road issue, the Sioux Lane culvert issue, the Bel Bedford <laughs> anodizing issue. There's a lot of things in here. It's not just the road program. And let me just say this. In general, I think the roads are the most essential problem we're facing because we've not done anything about residential roads because of all the money we've been spending on buildings and on things like the ODOT, uh, things that we're so proud of, the new, the new uh, entrance ramp, the different ends of Route 82, there's been an, uh, the changes over on Highland Road with that bridge over the railroad. So we've spent a lot of money on those issues and whether we should or we shouldn't, that's water over the dam. Right now we have about $15 million worth of residential roads that have an issue. And when we talk about this, we don't just talk about roads, this thing includes stormwater. And despite the fact that we pointed out that stormwater uh, at least the engineer has said, and I agree with him, the stormwater issue is being addressed through any ORSD that's charging us money right now. If you went home and looked at your uh, bill, you'll see that they are charging us, and they're charging every business in the city. And that's going to collect <coughs> around 906000 a year out of the businesses and the residents of this city. That's a lot of money. 226000 is going to be available to the city for its community share stormwater projects. We can't spend it on anything else. So what I'm saying is there shouldn't be stormwater in this ordinance at all because we're already covered with that issue by having basically any RSD charge us a tax fee. And I don't think, uh, and I do think actually, that we can bond this out because this is going to, we're not going to be out from under any ORSD anytime soon. It's going to be two decades at least. So my take in the, if speaking to this ordinance says it shouldn't include stormwater in it at all. That's number one. Number two, the, I don't believe that a quarter percent over five years or 10 years is necessarily what's needed. We need to figure out an overall plan that details out year by year what we're going to be doing and how we're going to approach it. I don't, estimates are fine, but when we get down to planning something this major, like charging people an extra quarter percent, I think we need to be able to come to them and say, this is how this is supposed to work. We know that these roads are going to have to be completely taken down to the, this depth, or we know there's going to be uh, mill and fill in these areas. We know that. We don't know it at this point. I don't believe that we've got a solid plan. We spent a lot of time with a discussion in council that doesn't really relate to the kinds of problems that we're having with these roads. We spent a lot of time avoiding a lot of planning in the roads area. We just have a, a draft three of this plan and we spent maybe uh, two different nights discussing this. That's not enough time. We could have been doing that uh, all through the spring and early summer. We haven't done that because this is just, you know, first shot, second shot. We have something uh, in this capital plan that says we want to spend a million dollars buying off Park Avenue uh, properties. Well, that's probably not, <laughs> in my mind, the most critical thing we're ever going to do. If we don't touch those Park Avenue properties for the next two decades, I'm not going to care. And what I want us to do is to come up with a plan on our residential roads that involves utilizing funding 
within the 2% structure. So that's the basic problem I'm having with Ordinance 58-2016. It includes stormwater money, which I don't think belongs in there, given the NERSD. And it doesn't really detail out a long-term, we don't have a detailed long-term road plan that we can cycle through every 20 years. What we have is a shot at what's gone on up to now, and, there, and there's a lot of bad roads. So my take on this is this is not adequate. We shouldn't be going back to the voters until we do an adequate job. I think your, you. your point to the million dollars for purchasing the, is a slap in the face to the future growth community. That was one of the things, needs and wants. There was something that they threw out there to say, you know, one of the things we could do going forward, and there was just talks, this is nothing that was going to happen, and we, we realized that, but maybe long down the line and, you know, everything goes our way and we can make this happen, but make like a town square. And they were working on a, a great little model to see if that could happen one day. It can't be referenced as something we're budgeting for. You know, it just needs and wants something you can look at way down the road. That was well, not Nick, it's in, the, it's in the draft capital plan, five years. You said plan. it a bunch of times. For I'm telling you, it was just a need and want. It's not necessarily something they were going to do. So well, we, then don't one, give one me a person on this council said we're going to spend that million dollars. Well, but it's part of the plan. It's it part was of part of that you're things. referencing, and the mayor's referencing. Oh, we need thirty-seven million dollars. That's part of the thirty-seven it million. It was part of the five-year plan, just like we've had in the past. Doesn't mean it's approved. Doesn't mean it's blessed. In there is Sue Lane Culver. Yes. It wasn't blessed. In there is Our Lady of Guadalupe. We didn't have the money. It wasn't blessed. In there is the Turning Lane at South Bedford. Turning Lane at Shepherd not blessed. There are a lot of things in this five-year plan that we didn't do, but it was to start the discussion. So for you to say, you've asked for this, yeah, it was put on the table and we all said no. You forget to talk about that part. Also, why are we here? Here's why. You hear what we need with $20 million in roads. Those of you who were fortunate that we did your roads last year, with money we thought we had, that we really didn't have, you're blessed. But why are we here? Because on Wednesday, if you don't put something down in the county, it doesn't go on the November ballot. So your next opportunity is next spring. Mm -hmm. So that means we can sit here and talk about it all night long, and all night long tomorrow. But if it fails, we do nothing, no roads. Period. We have no money. We don't do any stormwater. Why? No money. I'm going to face the fact. The estimated carryover at the end of this year is 500000 For a city, that's inexcusable. Now, we have an emergency fund, but as I've always said, you have your own emergency fund like your IRA. Would you do that to pay your lights and your gas? No. That's the emergency fund. The other fund we were told we could use is for pensions. We can't touch that by law. So we have choices to do here. Do we raise the property tax? Now, if I see one more person roll their eyes at that, we haven't raised the property tax. Why? Because the property tax has been kind of sacred because that's the only way the schools go. Why? Because the schools have never went back to the table and figured out how to fund it otherwise, even though they were told it truly wasn't legal. Other states, how do they fund their schools? Sales tax. You get more for your buck. So the sales tax, and it's not an exorbitant sales tax, but your property tax and stay low. What's the other option? You get your road, you want it done, you're assessed. And we go back and assess everybody last year because we spent money we didn't have. You want it fixed, we have to assess you. Kind of like if you want a sidewalk and it wasn't in when you bought your home, you paid for that sidewalk in the price of your house. You want it added after the fact, somebody's got to pay for it, we traditionally would assess. Take away the tax credit you don't have a tax credit, or we lower the tax credit. That actually is something council can take action on. Would I do that as a council member? No, because I believe that's your vote. 
Would I put it on the belfry to say to take it away? That I would do. But for me to voluntarily say, I'm going to take away your tax credit or cut it, I'm not a fan of that. And the proposal that's on the table is a quarter percent more tax for roads and stormwater. And that's not every bit of stormwater. You know, council chose to purchase a home. I wasn't a fan of that because we opened the door now that if anybody has water, they can come up and say, you got to buy my house. And we have had one family already ask us that. She voted for we haven't done anything to that property because we really don't have the money to finish it into the retention that it needs to be. We've talked about Guadalupe for I don't know how long as I watch the woods behind my neighbor's house and next door disappear and the water just flows right down the crow. That project is 390000 Do we say no? So our, our other choice? We do nothing. You live with what you've got. We come back and we start talking about it. We've got a road program that was identified. It's been re-clarified. We've talked about it. We know how much money we need. One other word of caution, my fellow council members, a couple of them have said, if we do this, we're going to bond the money. That means we'll have a payment. Yes. This council intentionally chose <coughs> years ago to stop doing that. When we paid off the last road note, we said we would never do that again. Because then you've tied that money up, you can't use it for anything else. Where if I say I'm going to do this road this year and I have the money to pay for it, I'm good. If I say I'm going to do this road this year and I bond it out, I've got to pay for it for many years. And I'm between a rock and a hard place. It's your choice. My firm belief is you as a resident get to, your vote is your choice. I need to be able to give you the option for that. There was a proposal put forth tonight that we renew the quarter percent. We haven't read that legislation yet, but in that renewal, the quarter percent that was for the rec center, it then would take 80% of that money to roads, 20% to the rec center. Well, when we look at the numbers of the rec center and how much it costs for operating costs, we're in the hole once we lose the funding from the quarter percent. Don't even talk about improvements. Don't even talk about upgrades. We heard someone say we need state of the art. It's not going to happen. So the choice really we have as council, and we're not going to make that choice tonight, you're only hearing second reading, is do we go forth and put something on the ballot for you to make the decision? Everyone said it, it resoundingly lost at the election. The percent of voters was minimal. So it, did we get a real good picture of what people want to do? I don't think so. And I'm hoping that um, Mr. Bill Kidd made a comment tonight that whatever we put out there, we come together as a group of five to promote it. Thank you. I want to respond. So I listened. I listened to what you said. I listened to what Dave said. I listened to what Nick and Jan said. And they said we wanted something that is that we can list what we're going to do each year. So I did. And that's what the plan is. And you just said that we don't have a plan that lists what roads are done each year. Well, this is what this addresses, the top 20 roads that need work. Now, the numbers need to be adjusted, I admit. But once those numbers are adjusted, we would have a plan that shows you how much money you need is needed. And if we can fit it in to without raising uh, taxes, then I'm all for it. But you know what? We can't sacrifice the rec center when we do it. And so, you know what? We can't sacrifice the police or the fire while we do it. So they're all essential. So and that's what I don't think you understand, that these things make the city grow. They're all equally essential. You can't just pinpoint what's more essential than the other. That's yeah. like saying I have two children. I love one more than the other. I love them both equally. Now, our, nodes, our roads need work, but so does our rec center. If that dies, guess what? It's the same problem. People won't want to move here. So we have to come up with a plan that, it, that, that can identify what needs done and fix it. I mean, and here's one. If you don't like it, 
you know, come up with something. Come back with something that's, that we can work with. But don't just say that we haven't presented something that's not detailed on much road each year, because it does. And I, like I said, I listen to you. And I want to try to make you happy by giving you something that we can work with. Because if it, if it doesn't, if we don't go out there and ask the voters to vote for it as, as, as a team, they're going to look for reasons to vote against an income tax increase. They, I mean, it's easy enough to, to, to do, it's just we have to come up, find a plan. Okay. I don't know, I'm just talking in circles sometimes. Yeah, I, I think uh, what we're talking about here is very much what everybody who has a home budget talks about, and that is, what is essential and what isn't? And if you have a home budget and you're very limited, then guess what? You, what is essential is a different set. Now we have a whole community of people, and let me make an observation here. The quarter percent was put on in, I mean, excuse me, the half percent was put on in August because the mayor and the majority of council decided we'd put it on in August. Mr. Engel and I voted against doing that because we didn't like the fact that normally special elections involve lower turnout. And as it turned out, uh, it was lower turnout, but it was resoundedly rejected. And it's, there's nothing surprising about lower turnout if you look at every one of the special elections that have gone on in the last two decades, and you can, you will see Lower turnout, that's just the way it works. Now, as far as what could be done, I'm looking at a plan here that's got a lot of uh, bloat in it, this draft capital plan, but we don't have a detailed plan on what's really essential for us to spend money on. And Which plan are let's, you referring to? Let's, uh, Which plan look, are you referring to? This draft capital plan is, is now this is what the mayor referred to as the previous uh, regular council meeting as, oh, we have $37 million worth of needs that we must address. Well, I'm sorry if there's a lot of bloating in it, and there is, and there's a lot of stuff like Park Avenue that doesn't make any difference to anybody. And I'm not insulting the future growth committee. Yeah, I mean, they're fine it's, it's with the me. Redevelopment and Growth Committee, by the way. Well, whatever they are, uh, I am not concerned about uh, trying to say anything other than this. We have things we need to do. One of them is the roads. That's very clear. We can make an adjustment. We don't only have to have money from our budget dedicated to the rec center. We can also have regular appropriations that fill in where we have blanks at the rec center. There's no such thing as the rec center has to be sacred and we don't touch it. So let's, let's just talk about we appropriate money for police every year, we appropriate money for the fire department every year. Why in the world wouldn't we just look at appropriating money where, appro where we should for the recreation center? All I'm doing in this in this draft plan, this draft ordinance, number 61, I guess it is, is saying we'll set aside money for the recreation center capital needs in this plan rather than having 100% for roads, quarter, that quarter percent. Uh, I personally think that we need to appropriate where, where we think the money ought to go. And we only get X amount of money every year. And we're actually getting, I just looked at the revenues, the mid-year revenues, trying to figure out if our taxes are following uh, basically slightly above the line they were last year, and they are. They are slightly above, they're not greatly above. But they're $43,000 lower. They are $43,000. When I looked at the June numbers. Through June, they were $43,000. Yeah, I looked at them in the June report, and Everything that I saw From was, Rita, com oh, I'm not talking about Rita, I'm not From talking Rita. about the total. We are up in uh, our, we're talking about uh, our property taxes. We have three different kinds, they're up. Rita is just slightly different, but that is, there's nothing in this plan that says we are, we have any concern that our taxes are in the tank or something, they're not. 
we're well above where we were before we had the recession. We're about 1.5 million above in income tax and in, we're basically recovered in the property tax area. So we need to think about what we're gonna spend money on and we need to have a very sharp winnowed out plan to spend money on the things that are critical. And we need to acknowledge that any RSD is charging us a tax. And therefore, we have stormwater money, and that's what we ought to use to support our stormwater program. Because if we don't acknowledge that and say we're not going to uh, deal with that, well, I'm sorry, but the, every Macedonia resident and business is dealing with it. They're paying it in. They need to get at least their portion out of it. So, at any rate, I think we need to move along. I, I think everybody said their piece. Well, I, I just want to adjust the appropriation of the parks. Mm -hmm. It would be the third on the list, and that's why it's not on there, because it would be, I think I said on Friday, when's the last time in 20 years anyone's made an improvement at the park? It's always on the back burner, because it's the, it's the one portion that everybody loves to have, but no one wants to pay for. When you dedicate money to it, it, it just like we're trying to dedicate money to the roads, it, you take the politics out of it. There's, yeah, we, no, there's no mayor council that can touch that money once it's collected. It's going to go to your parks. It's going yeah. to go to your roads. doesn't matter who's mayor, who's on council. Well, let me put it this way. And that would be Kevin, something that the voters would approve. We have made major, major upgrades to the playground equipment in two of our parks. And that was done without dedicated money. That was done through grants primarily, but some additional funding was made. So it isn't true that we've done nothing in the parks. I mean, no. look at the long, you know, that is just not true. Look, can, before we move on to 59, uh, just, which we just, will just at some finish. point. It's not a high priority on your list, though. Well. It's the lowest of, the, of police, priority. fire, and parks. It's the lowest priority on anyone's list. Well, of course. Everybody has priorities that they have to look this, at this in their life and in their home and every place else. Just, just real quick. So people are aware that the proposals of the table take us renew. One would be to renew the parks. The other would be to add a quarter percent. You then would be paying two and a quarter percent. Mm -hmm. The tax credit does not go away. It's not removed in any of this ballot language. Right. Twinsburg's at two percent. Solon is at two percent. Oakwood is at two and a half. Cleveland has proposed on their ballot to go to two and a half. Okay, let's take a look at Twinsburg Wait, and Solon, James, and everyone James, knows James, the size. Not to interrupt, so is Akron. Akron and is as well. Rhonda said, Akron is proposing a right. two, two and a quarter, inc or a quarter percent right. increase. But right? look at the volume of people and the industry, because that was brought up by someone here. You know, we, don't, we can't compare the industry. We can't. Cleveland's going two and a half, so if you work in two and a half, here you go. Hudson's at two, Akron's at two and a quarter. And in 1997, we did a temporary tax increase because of the recession, and we went to two and a quarter. And then we let it go. Expire. Thinking the recession was over, even though every governmental agency would tell you that it takes a minimum of two to three years for a city to recoup from a recession. That's right. As well, then, the state decided they start, stop cutting money that they were giving to the individual communities. So we got hit with a double whammy. We got a recession that takes a while to come back from, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure we're really out of the recession. And it takes two years to come back from, and we lost city money. So the proposals tonight, there's actually three. The quarter percent for the roads, the quarter percent renewal for the parks, and then Ms. Hannigan has a proposal just to renew the quarter percent, but split that between the roads and basically it's gonna be the operating. I don't care what you say, you can't put on here capital improvements. It's purely gonna to be to help subsidize the operating fund of the rec center, which will still be short. Unless you do other things such as raise fees, raise programming costs, shut the rec center down on certain days of the week. I mean, start diminishing, diminishing the hours. So we've got to look at the fact that we're too, do I want to pay more taxes? Oh, heck no. 
But when I drive the roads and I look at the stormwater, and yes, I do use the rec center, I don't mind paying because I'm gonna get the amenities that I use, so. One last point I wanna to make, two, two things. The, the safe stormwater and roadways don't coincide, they do, and engineering will echo that, I'm sure. If you take Crow Drive as one example where there's gutter pans on each side of the road which are completely shut, that's a stormwater repair. That is not a roadway repair. So to remove stormwater from the roadway repairs will not make, make any logical sense. Second thing, the, the fountain of gold from NURSD of $225,000 a year. In water main replacements alone right now, we have $5.8 million in repairs. Nick, can we, can we we're moving on. Now. Detail the stormwater to as it relates to the roads and not put it as so vague that it could, that money could be used to do stormwater projects. But leave it in there to where it says it will, it will to for improvements as it, uh, you know, as you need for the roads. Does that make sense? I, I, would, I, venture, think, I would venture to say that 90% of stormwater issues are related to roads, and I'm sure he would echo okay. that. Right, but I, I think the question on the floor is. But what the language says, stormwater that. projects, mm -hmm. and that would address Slough, Sioux Road and Lady. Uh, if, if you want to put it as related to roads, I'm fine with that. Right. Does that make sense? I mean, that it's, so it just so we collect the money, we could fix the freaking roads and not use it for other projects. You might be creating an issue with the auditors, though, because they're going to get into an analysis of what exactly your project did, and that might yeah. be difficult. I mean, engineering would have to weigh in on the difficulty in distinguishing mm -hmm. between the two, because they're, like Nick's saying, there's not necessarily a fine dividing line between the two types of projects. <coughs> I mean, Sometimes. no question. I mean, That's all right, moving on to ordinance on. number 59. I offer ordinance 59 2016 for its second reading by title only. An emergency ordinance amending sections 18201B, 18203, and 18204A of the codified ordinances of the City of Macedonia, Ohio, renewing the current one quarter percent income tax levy, which expires on June 30th, 2017, and which is des designated exclusively for maintenance and operation of the City uh, Recreation Center, including any new construction and other parks and recreation purposes said renewal to continue for a 20-year term, expiring on June 30th, 2037, and submitting the same to the electors on November 8th, uh, 2016. Moving on to Ordinance 60. I no, make a motion. That was 60 and that was, on that, was that was 59. That was 59. But that was 59. Right. That was, okay, that was. I thought we already read 59 once. Okay. okay. I apologize. I think we started, too. We got sidetracked. Ordinance 60. I'd like to offer ordinance number 60, 2016 for second reading by title only, please. An emergency ordinance amending sections 18201B, 18203, and 18204A of the codified ordinances of the City of Macedonia, Ohio, renewing the current one quarter percent income tax levy, which expires on June 30th, 2017, and which is designated exclusively for maintenance and operation of the city recreation center, including any new construction and other parks and recreation purposes, said renewal to continue for a 20-year period expiring on June 30th, 2037, uh, and submitting the same to the electors on November 8th, 2016. Again, why did you hear basically the same language twice? one in the body of it. Mark, why don't you explain it? Explain it so well. Yeah, the, the first of these two uh, related ordinances, 59-2016, contains a language that will be forwarded to the codifier if the road levy passes and this rec renewal passes. Ordinance 60-2016 contains the language that will be forwarded to the codifier if the road levy failed but the rec levy passes. But if they were all to be passed, how much is on the ballot? Two. There's only two ballot okay. issues. One road, one rec. It, it sounds confusing, but there's a reason for having three. Yeah, yeah the, actually the ballot language is therefore identical on Ordinance 59 and 60 for the rec. Thank you. 
Mark, it just occurred to me that for 61, doesn't there the 48 hour rule? Yeah, there will have to be a motion to suspend the 48 hour rule uh, before it can be considered by council. Can, can we talk about 60 for a minute? So I put together a list of, uh, of things that I've spoke about in, in the committees that I'm on and the people that I talked to and then Angela supplied what improvements are needed at the rec center immediately. And it's a pretty extensive list. And, you know, some of these things are, people roll their eyes like, why do we need this? But other people I talk to like, this is the first thing on my list. So I, I decided to put them all out there. I want you to tell you which ones I'm for and against, but you know, I, it shows, I guess, that improvements are needed and expansion would do well. Um, so I, I, I put it together because I like lists and just like everybody else wants to see what their money is getting spent, so do I. So here it is. I mean, I, I don't, I try to be as transparent as I can be, um, even when people say I'm not being transparent. Well, here's my plan, here's my list. As far as costs go on East One, I, I don't know. I don't know how you can get, a, get an estimated cost on a project that might be 18 years away. But you know what? It still should be on the list of things that can possibly be done at the rec center. Um, and I hope people can look at that and find something that says, this is a good idea to renew this levy because I'd like to go to the rec center. I don't because they don't have such and such. Or I stopped going because the locker rooms are so small. Or you know what? I, I, I didn't have kids before. I didn't even know they had an indoor pool. Oh, they're gonna put a splash park in? Awesome, I'm gonna join now. So it's supposed to not only be something that the city provides, but you know what, as Angela said earlier, it's a commercial business that can re generate money. You know, and I, I just hope people take that in mind that when you look for, when a new family moves into a town, they look at those things when they, when they want to buy a house. So if you don't have, a, there's plenty of other places around here that have houses in the same price range that the city provides. You know, we got to continue to provide. So I hope people take that in consideration. <coughs> Moving on to 61 Silver, do you want to make a motion? Yes, uh, I'll make a motion to. Suspension of the 48 hours. Yes, suspension uh, to have first and second reading by title only. Would that do the job? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it will take four votes, by the way. Yes. We'll do a roll call on that too, please, Josephine. Yes. Do you want a second first? Well, we I need a second. Yeah. Yeah, I made a motion to first, first and second reading. Yeah, for first and second reading for Ordinance 61 2016. And to suspend the rules, the 48 hour rule. Right. right. I'll second. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Bilkey. You know, even though I didn't think that we'd get this cooperation on Thursday when we originally wanted to make a special meeting, I'm going to vote yes. Mr. Engel. Yes. Ms. Hannigan? Yes. Mr. Molnar? Yes. And Ms. Teller? Yes. So we are accelerated then? First and second. Okay. Yeah, she's going to read it there. And then you, I'm going to, do I just say something now? Do I have to, uh, are you I, just going like to read it? I'd like to read the title. Okay. Okay. So it's for the first, second reading, the suspension of the rules. So we're, they're all on par now. Right. Um, an emergency ordinance amending sections 18201B, 18203, and 18204A uh, of the codified ordinances of the City of Macedonia, Ohio, in order to increase the city's income tax rate by one quarter percent for a 10 year term for road improvements and for maintenance and operation of the City Recreation Center, including any new construction and other parks and recreation purposes, and submitting the same to the electors on November 8th, 2016. <coughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Well, we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. I hope so. My wife works tomorrow, too. Well, yeah, it needs to get done. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe during that.